President Obama and the Saudi king meet today amid rising tensions. Obama arriving this morning in Riyadh to try personal diplomacy with America's biggest Arab partner. On the surface, the U.S. wants the Saudis to step up its efforts to defeat ISIS. But behind the scenes, the Saudis have a laundry list of complaints against the United States. Chief among them is a proposed bill in Congress that would give U.S. victims of 9-11 the ability to sue Saudi Arabia for its alleged ties to the hijackers. CNN International Diplomatic Editor Nick Robertson is in Riyadh this morning with more. Hi, Nick. Yeah, hi there, Carol. I guess the sort of biggest indication of just where those tensions lie came when President Obama arrived at the international airport here, here in Riyadh. Um, there was no very senior high-level delegation to meet, and the most senior official, the governor of Riyadh, an important person, but not uh, somebody at the center of government, not the foreign minister, not the king, uh, not the interior minister, not the defense minister, all these people, very senior uh, royals here in Saudi Arabia, none of those at the airport. That, I think, is, is really an early indication, perhaps setting the tone for President Obama for his meetings here. He's met uh, with the king. Obviously, President Obama keen to get support from the king, from uh, his uh, Gulf uh, Cooperation Council allies to, to target ISIS. How can they be better effective at doing that? What can they do? How can they be involved? Can they help in Iraq? All these sorts of issues uh, are on the table. For their part, King Salman, the Saudis, they want a ballistic missile defense shield against what they see as a potential for an escalation of Iranian violence in the region. Um, and this, of course, a big point of tension because the Saudis feel that the United States, President Obama, supports Iran now more than them. So the 9-11 Commission, the 28 pages of bill before Congress, really, that is just fuel in the fire of the tensions that already exist, Carol. All right, Nick Robertson reporting live from Saudi Arabia this morning. Thank you. Uh, suing a foreign country is extremely difficult, but it's certainly not impossible. The family of American student Elisa Flatow successfully sued the government of Iran for nearly $250 million. Elisa was killed in a terror attack 20 years ago while she was studying in Israel. Her father, Stephen Flatow, is the attorney who led that legal battle. He joins me this morning. Hi, Stephen. Good morning. Um, did Iran ever pay that judgment? No. American taxpayer did. How did how did that happen? There was a compromise settlement with the Clinton administration back in uh, 2001 that paid us approximately 10 percent of our uh, judgment. Uh, I wasn't the only family that benefited. Others did as well. Uh, and that money was supposed to come from Iranian assets that were blocked in the United States. But it never happened. And why didn't it happen? Uh, the big word is uh, politics, the same thing that's rearing its head now with the uh, new terrorism bill. Interesting. So so it, is it an impossible task for these 9-11 families to bring a lawsuit, even if they were able to? Well, the, the task of bringing a lawsuit is rather easy. Uh, it's collecting on your judgment that poses a problem. Of course, in our case, um, the State Department um, had a heart attack when we started pursuing Iranian assets. If this new legislation goes through and victims start pursuing Saudi Arabian assets, the State Department is going to have an outright stroke and collapse. Um, this is something that is groundbreaking. Uh, it is involving uh, an ostensible ally of the United States, uh, whereas Iran was on the anti-terrorism target list. Uh, they were a state sponsor of terrorism. So this is going to be an interesting fight between the victims uh, and the American government, their own government. Well, well something else that, that may doom you know, these, these, this 9-11 family's efforts, the Saudis have also threatened to dump $750 billion worth of U.S. assets. I mean, for the families, they're saying, well, too bad. But for the government of the United States, it's, it's another story, isn't it? I'm not an economist, and I'm not a I'm not official at the Treasury Department, but I imagine that uh, that's more bluster than reality because the Saudis are going to be affected with any um, any pressure on the American currency. They're going to be affected as well. So, to me, as a layperson, it sounds like a lot of talk, but you never know. Uh, another key argument against the 9/11 bill is it, is it could open up the U.S. government to be sued by victims of drone strikes, for instance. So the United States could also have to pay if a lawsuit is filed against Saudi Arabia and that lawsuit is successful. Is that a valid argument? If there is a uh, if there's legislation in a foreign country that is similar to the legislation that we're passing here, then I suppose anything could be considered, uh, you know, 
legal, uh, legal in that country's particular laws. So whether it's a drone strike that's deemed terrorism, when in effect it's uh, protecting uh, that host country, uh, is up to a jury to decide. Now, the question is, uh, what kind of legal system do you have in the Gulf region, for instance? There's nothing finer than the American judicial system. I put faith in, in our system of courts and laws here. I wouldn't put any much faith in um, what happens in the, uh, in the Gulf region, to be honest with you. Uh, so at any point in time, you have to reflect back and remember how this whole impasse with Iran, for instance, began. It began with an illegal seizure of American assets in Iran. And um, to bring it into the court system in, uh, let's say, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, there's going to have to be Saudi legislation. Uh, but we know what kind of system they have in Saudi Arabia. It's a monarchy, and whatever the government wants to do there, they're going to do. So that shouldn't stop America from moving forward. Uh, but then again, we're going to have a State Department that's going to be, um, uh, let's say, um, upset, uh, to use a mild word. <laughs> Yes, I that would be. So, so, so my final question to you is, what advice would you give to these 9-11 families? Well, be prepared for the long haul. Be prepared for the fight of your life. Um, I know it took us a, a number of years of, um, of almost daily involvement with the federal government and with the uh, Iranian asset location and discovery. Uh, this is going to be a, a different situation because uh, terror legislation has really moved forward. And it looks as though the smoking gun in all of this is going to be released by a national security here in the United States that will either point the finger at top officials in the Saudi government or will, um, will, will double talk. If it's double talk, uh, then they're going to have their hands full. But at least uh, Saudi Arabia's dirty laundry will be out in the air for everybody to see uh, if they did have involvement with the 9-11 attacks. Stephen Flato, thank you so much for being with me this morning. I appreciate it. Still to come in the newsroom.